Hey guys, welcome back to Game Devs Play Games, where we are trying one of the new modes we came across, Dino Deathmatch. Yes. Uh, and it's... This is cool. I like this a lot. Um, dino vs. Dino, man. I think they, they might have mentioned that in some of our earlier feedback, too, that that was something that they were thinking about. And it's, yeah. it's almost like one of those, well, of course they're going to do this, because well, why wouldn't you? It's awesome. Actually, what I, li what I appreciate is that they haven't put in just a standard deathmatch. Humans versus humans, because at that point, it's Team Fortress 2 or Counter Strike, and that's not this, that's not a bad thing. But the whole point, the whole uh, hook of this game is playing as the dinosaurs. This is cool. This is fun. And what the hell? Where the hell are you? What? Okay. What? Uh, who? What team am I on? Am I blue or red? I think you're red. I think I'm red. I mean, I'm colorblind, so it's a little hard to tell. But I can see blue, so there you go. I assume this is not blue. Yeah. Um, so this is uh, kind of an interesting situation because I think at one point Whee! they were saying that they wanted to implement user generated oh my gosh, levels. That was a water slide. That was a water slide. There's also a portal in this level somewhere. Let me so, see. Oh, there it is. I'm thinking this is going to be a user generated level. I, I think this is a user generated level. Um, it seems like a very strange yeah. uh, concept for something that the devs would have made. It certainly grabs the eye. Um, no, this is cool. Wait, I'm this ready. is fun. People are just running around killing each other, <laughs> and it's not like people aren't trash talking themselves or trash talking each other in the chat box. Nobody's being a cheap or like a, a cheater or anything like that. People are just running around as dinosaurs clawing each other apart, <laughs> and this looks like fun. This is really cool. Wow, what the hell? Uh -oh. oh man, you really got sandwiched there. Um, oh, I'm on so. The blue team. Something uh, else that they, uh, the devs were talking about doing is that they want to, um, if their fan base grows enough, they want to go kind of transfer into a free-to-play state, um, similar to TF2, um, and Which have that only be the makes model, sense. where the like it's going to be f majorly free-to-play with a couple of uh, free cosmetic changes and then like one-time purchases for something small like a hat or something like that. Yeah, and um, it's shocking. It's shocking too how well that can work when you can yeah. pull it off. I've seen a lot of other first-person shooters attempted, um, and I think it's smart that they started as at least so far have. That's just a pool. Wow, oh, that's cool. Um, uh, I think it's a good that they started as a like pay-to-play model. Yes. Um, because the the free-to-play model that with like aesthetic purchases only works if you already have a giant community, and that's yeah. why TF2 works as a free-to-play game. That was something that they wanted to make sure that they did before going into free to play is that they want to make sure that they had the fan base, but also they did not want to model themselves after the other free to play first person shooters that are dead and like not popular or don't have any traffic going on. Right. They wanted and to make sure that they established a fan base before taking any steps forward. And I think that's that's smart from a business perspective. Absolutely. The, the other games that did it probably started as free to play specifically to try to build a community faster yeah um and that's pretty much the only reason you would ever go free to play is that there's no threshold to entry mm -hmm. um which you know works for some games but it still is pretty dangerous because you're paying for their server space and you've spent all this time in the development mm -hmm. and if you don't get enough people that are actually purchasing the like the in-game content the, yeah. the paid content then yeah. you just don't you made a game for free and made no money off of it yeah Whoa! <laughs> oh, oh, oh man oh that's hilarious <laughs> um one of the things so compared to when you played this a while ago and understandably it was a solid it's six a months ago we're just walking on the <laughs> they're just <laughs> wow there's uh... several of them um <laughs> compared to when we played this six months ago how did the raptor feel I think the Raptor actually has been balanced down. Okay. Um, it's a little less powerful, which I think is good because I think the Raptor was too good before. Yeah, and that was one of the things that the devs had let us know is that the, the Raptor was going to get a lot of rebalancing. One of the things that I had mentioned actually in the last episode was that the pounce animation they were going to switch up. Um, but also they wanted to make it so it's not the, the dino that everybody immediately jumps on because he's the OP um, class pick. Mm -hmm. um, which I do appreciate. I like that they really are paying attention to that sort of thing. There we go. I'm going to try this guy. Oh, is that a spitter? Yup. Yeah. Ew. It's got like this crazy cattail thing going on. 
Yeah. Um, so, um, something else that the devs had sent us, sorry for the dead moment, um, I'm, I'm literally just going through, <laughs> and, and, I, because they're, they're good talking points, and it's some, of the, a lot of the stuff Ooh. that they had sent us were in response to some of the stuff that we had talked about on our previous play. Yeah, and we actually got a, a pretty good... We got a good, substantial amount. And we got a really good list of feedback from people in the forums, too. Yeah. Um, I think in our first playthrough, that's one of the things that struck us, or at least struck me really well, is mm. I was just shocked at how willing people were uh, to discuss the game with us and kind of tell us where they felt we were right and wrong. And yeah. honestly, that's like, that's a dream come true that's for me. That's awesome. Because that's yeah. all I ever really hoped to hear from. Yeah. Because um, it's everything we talk about. Like, we talk a lot about game design and stuff, but it's really just a discussion starter. Mm. We we don't have all the answers, and we're not always necessarily right. And I actually really, really like to hear what other people think about yeah. uh, for the th topics that we bring up. Um, but anyway, what was the point that you were going to bring up? Uh, it was uh, obviously it can't. It's not really relatable in this mode because it's uh, it involves a human class. But the scientist, I guess, we had a couple of issues with. Um, but the idea and concept they were going for was a very support heavy class. Um, the the tranquilizer was is a sort of like an equalizer when you're, you're playing as a team, um, and they really they understand some of our concerns. And they are working on s some more rebalancing issues, but they just wanted to make sure that we knew that the scientist was not just a throwaway class. They actually do want that to be a, a main thing, which I actually have noticed in the the last mode that you were in. There were a lot more scientists I saw of any other class, which is kind of cool. Yeah, I, I actually still really like the scientist. Um, m maybe it's because I tend to prefer sniper classes regardless. Yeah. Um, but the tranquilizer gun, I think, is actually a really, really fun concept. And now there's a... Well, maybe this was in the earlier version, too. I'm not totally sure. Um, but you can get a tranquilizer sniper rifle. So oh, that's, yeah. that's like the epitome of a pure support class. Mm -hmm. um, and as far as... And I, I, we talked about this a little bit in the last episode, but as far as team synergy goes, that's amazing. Yeah. Um, I've only really seen a few other games that have really utilized team dynamics like that. Um, I can't remember the names of them, but like... I, I really, really like it when there are game mechanics dedicated, or even, like, characters that aren't really even damage dealers, mm -hmm. um, but just have, like, support is, mechanics sorry, in, a, in a like, really a first-person shoot. battle that you're having right Dude, now. Dude, this is awesome. <coughs> this is... See, like, this is all I ever really wanted when yeah. I played the Pterodactyl, is to have, like, awesome aerial combat. <laughs> this, is, this is pretty crazy. Um, something else we'll be exploring, most likely in the next episode. Yes. Um, we had gone into the survival mode um the survival mode that we had played was actually in its earliest stage of completion yeah it um, was it i think it had just yeah recently been finished or um, released at least i guess we they, wa it. they wanted to add a <coughs> a lot more content to that because survival modes in first person or third person shooters in situations like this is actually a really big lure to get uh, your friends and everybody to cooperate, it's another it's another game mode that's really popular among this kind of model. Um, they wanted to add more, bigger and crazier maps. Uh, the wave variety was going to increase. They wanted to have a lot more a lot more stuff to do um, rather than kind of what we saw. And uh, admit, admittedly, like I said before, it was that was the earliest stage of uh, completion that we had seen. So I'm actually really excited to see how that turns out. Yeah, I'm. Um, I think we'll probably play that in the next episode too, because yeah. I, I, I personally am a huge fan of survival modes. Anyway, also this battle right now is just ridiculous. Yes. because he's just going back and forth yeah. with his teleporter. <laughs> it's just funny butter, to watch. Butter, 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 yeah. butter. Oh god, um, there's a T Rex now. Now something else that uh, the devs had sent us was that uh, character customization is going to be a bigger factor in how the game plays. The UI for it has been much polished, too, since we last saw it. Yeah. We haven't really unlocked anything yet, so we haven't gotten to see what the character com customization is, right. is like. Although I do um, I do really like that it's not just skins or anything. You actually get guns, like you mentioned with the Trank Sniper. Rifle. Yeah, yeah. That's awesome. And there are skins, too, um, oh, yeah. which I think is also fun. Yeah. Um, I, I think that's fantastic. Um, I'm a little intrigued as to how it's going to work with dinos because obviously it's going to work 
really well with um, the humans, like when you're playing hmm. on the human side. I, I wonder true. what they're going to do for dinos, whether it's like you pick abilities like for a pterodactyl, you fly like 10% faster. Or your 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 speed as a tyrannosaurus is a little bit faster. Something Something where it's like a static bonus as opposed to having an all new attack or something like that. Yeah, uh, I, I'm actually pretty curious about that too. Um, and I wonder how they'll present it too. Like, you know, is it like a like mutation? Different, yeah, mutating, mute, a different like type of claw, a different type of mm -hmm. like acid spit. Like, yeah, they can like do all the, sorts the, of stuff with that. The raptor's uh, leap could go like a little bit farther or a little Ooh. bit faster. Like, um, stuff like that. That I'm really interested to see. Because, like, Guns are fun and all, but mutated yeah. dinosaurs, that's where it's And at. even even with that, too, we can we could potentially see some interesting combinations of, like, what if, you know, uh, one of the bigger dinosaurs has an acid spit? A little unorthodox, mm. but it it could be interesting, and right? there could be trade-offs, too. Oh, because now dinos he dies. Are, yeah. Ugh. There could be trade-offs to that situation, too, because dinos are, are like, the big bads, you know? They're, they're really powerful in their own right. Um... And I feel like if you did have something like that with one of the big dinos having a spit attack, oh. there would be a little bit of a trade-off, like you move a little bit slower, or your health is a little bit lower because of this mutation. Mm -hmm. You know? Whoa. Something to Whoa. keep the game balanced, because so far, throughout this entire play Ridge through bodies. <laughs> physics, <laughs> so far throughout this, everything seems very much um, game balance focused, and I think that's awesome. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm curious how they, they chose to balance the game for Dino vs. Dino, though, um, because I there can't be as much of a rock, paper, scissor thing going on as there is with the human. I think that was the original design, so it's right. I wonder how they kind of like accommodated well, um, this game mode, too, for, for that. You know, I... Because I, I, right now it seems sound... like the same kind of dinosaur is better at killing the same kind of dinosaur. Right. So, like... You know, wow. the pterodactyl is better at killing a pterodactyl. Right. Um, whereas a raptor might be better at killing a raptor. And then the big guys are just good at killing everything. Yeah. Like, I, I feel like that's one minor... Uh, minor flaw I'm seeing in this mode is that the the big guys are good at killing anything, whereas the pterodactyls, it's actually quite challenging because everything else is moving so much faster. Which, there's a little bit of that in the regular mode, too, right? And that's oh, why yeah. I think there's that harder limit on the big dinos rather than the little ones. Yeah. Um. <laughs> oh, that was cool. <laughs> that was a clothesline from hell with that tail. Yeah, I don't know if that's what killed me, but I'll take it. Yeah. Anyway. That's all for this episode. Cool. Uh, next episode, we'll be diving into the survival mode and oh, seeing what new yeah. goodies that mode has, and that's uh, going to be fun. What's our question of the day? Um, I want to ask about the uh, user-generated levels, actually. Sure. Um, so, obviously, we didn't talk a ton about it, um, but as far as, like, community goes, having user-generated levels is probably one of the coolest things to have... Uh, new content regularly streaming into your game. Mm. So I guess my question is, um, I don't know, what do you think is a good way to utilize user-generated content, right? Mm. Um, because there could be a lot of bad stuff and a lot of good stuff, so how do you make sure that the good stuff helps the community, the online community thrive rather than, like, mm. avoid it? Oh, I gotcha. Kind of a complicated question, but it works. I hope you guys like that one. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> flippy dinosaur. <dinosaur. laughs> All right, well, thank you for watching, everyone, and stay tuned for the next episode. See ya. Bye. Dude, I died so much. I know. <laughs> <laughs>